Uh, sharp right angle turns at high velocity without being smeared or killed. Why it seems impossible. Accelerated time flow rate solution. How to speed up and slow down time flow experiments to test this hypothesis, some consequences of accelerated time flow. Well, this is an uh, a impression of what I observed back in 1967 in the summer that got me involved doing all of this. I observed a flying saucer uh, do six right angle turns, send me a telepathic message that it was going away in about 10 seconds in my vision as a streak of light, and then it did that. Now here I have the path of some UFO that decided it was no longer going to go there, it's going to go someplace else, and it was just going to do it. And in a very short distance, a curvature radius of uh, 500 feet in my chosen example, and uh, a velocity of 1,000 miles an hour, just a little below the speed of sound, it does this little turn. You can put those numbers into the standard uh, acceleration formula that you experience in a turn, and you come up with 103 Earth Gs. We cannot survive 103 Earth Gs. It really kind of, you know, deforms us. Now, the, there have been people that have witnessed on, I guess, radar particularly, uh, situations of turns, and I'm going to show you another one now, uh, basically a right angle turn, where if you do the calculations I just talked about by characteristic radius of curvature and the speed they went into the turn, where they were doing 5, 10, 15,000 Gs in the turn. Well, obviously, you don't survive that. You're, you're an organic goo on the wall. So, and it's very unpleasant. Uh, but luckily, it's quick. Uh, so anyway, if you look at this from a real technical point of view, like physicists guys do, they say, well, we have a standard form for the radius of curvature, but it's not as simple as that. First off, you're going in a straight line, so there's no acceleration. And then you make up your mind you're going to turn. You start your turn but you don't immediately go to R as the radius of curvature return. There's this transition region, and then when you finally get more or less to the new direction you want to go, there's another transition region to, to get to that. So if you plot the acceleration experienced in that turn, it looks something like that. Here's the acceleration axis. That's the time. You've got this exponential, and then you stay at a constant you know, 5,000 Gs, and then you go back to what you were. Well, you can trying to imagine the technology required to have synthetic gravity or something that always works perfectly because if it doesn't you're dead well there's another solution for the problem and it's laughably simple though it took me a long time to think of it but um, if you have accelerated time flow technology and you have it inside the ship and you take that and just plug it back into the standard physics equations they tell you that it, it decreases the uh, acceleration you experience by one over the square of the time flow rate that you're, that you're in. So imagine that you could crank your time flow rate up to 500 times normal. Well, one over 500 square is one over a quarter of a million. So when I told you you had 5,000 Gs normally calculated, well, if you had 500 times normal time flow rate inside of your ship, that would decrease it by 1 over 250,000. In other words, you would now basically experience the turn more or less as just a change in viewing angle from the portholes. You don't get smeared. But how in the heck can you change time flow rate? Okay, here's my big hunch, my big guess. That's all it is. I can't prove it to you. But a simple experiment, you can check it out if you've got the right university and funding. <laughs> Up here, you know, open-minded and the money. Now up here we've got uh, uh, north-south or in the bottom north-south. So imagine it's north-north or south-south. My hypothesis is this. One combination of equal like-like magnetic poles facing off against each other cause time flow rate to increase and the other combination causes time flow rate to slow down. And there's a simple way to test it. Put a watch in there. Standard physics tells you if you have north-north facing off against each other or south-south facing off against each other, the, since they're vector fields and they're, one's going this way and the other's going this way and they're equal strength, they nullify each other so nothing should be happening in there. I think that's a mistake. I think it, like I just told you, it changes time flow rate. But I don't think it's overly obvious. I think you have to have a north and a south or south and north a real high intensity before you start to appreciably notice time flow rate change. And it won't be linear. It'll be more like a square of the field. Now, if that's true, 
If it's true, this is just a guess on my part, my big guess and hypothesis, this solves all your problems in terms of making right angle turns and a whole bunch of other stuff. But I figure you're going to have to be able to have really neat uh, superconducting magnets that go up to a million, million gauss or better. And you just put one set of in your ceiling of your craft and another in your floor. And there's a few other things you have to do too. Uh, this here is like a flight path of a UFOs that have been photographed. Uh, one trick that sticks in mind was in down in Australia some years ago. This thing comes zipping over this town, stops, zips, zips, zip, 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 and goes, and they got it on film. And anybody looks at it and says, that's totally irrational. Right. If you're living in our time flow rate. But if you're living at 500, 1,000, or whatever time flow rate, one place they stop, each of the vertexes is places where they stopped at. Well, that was the museum they were checking out. The next one was the hospital. The next was City Hall. The next was the park. The other one was the sewer plant system. And, you know, they did a tour and they left because they were late for the rendezvous with the starship. So it makes sense if you have accelerated time flow. Uh, we right now are coming against a technological barrier of computation with our computers. Everybody's saying, we can't go any faster. Silicon just can't get more chips and more. We're running out of time and speed. Well, if you've got accelerated time flow, you can take your one gigahertz microprocessor, your whatever, and put it in a, uh, let's say, a thousand times normal time flow environment. Now your new problem becomes getting enough data into the computer for it to keep working. You know, just, we can't get enough data in there. It wants more data. We just can't get through there quick enough with it. Uh, laser light beam formation, well, there are, that's too, I've got time to go through that. Um, uh, tractor beams, creating them, uses for consequences. How to make a tractor beam. Phase lock, plane, polarized, overlapping laser beams can form a tractor beam for moving objects around, like people and cows. And phase lock, plane, polarized, overlapping micro beams can also be a tractor beam because all they are is the same type of energy at just two different uh, frequencies and wavelengths. So I've got one beam coming down this way and another beam just like it, and they're phase locked. That's, that's key. Uh, what that means, they, they're, they're riding in time locked to each other. And they form this interference pattern zone right here, this, this zone here. And this interference zone travels into the surface, the surface that we want to influence with our beams. Well, if you do the calculations, they're standard physics calculations, somewhat hairy, but uh, here's the bottom line. As long as the interference pattern of the two beams is absorbed in the surface within less than one quarter wavelength of the light or radiation used, like there's the, that little place there, that's the, from there to there, that's the wavelength. So if you're using a material that this wavelength or frequency of light is highly absorptive in and such that it's absorbed within a quarter wavelength of the surface, the net force on the surface is back towards the beams. And that's a tractor beam. Now, instead of having light beams, it could have just as easily been microwave beams. You know, haven't you ever wondered how they picked the cow up out of the pasture for the, you know, for the mutilation? Uh, well, hey, they just say, that cow is mostly water. Let's look at the absorption places for water. Oh, here's a good one. Let's use that one. Oh, it's a Guernsey. Well, I'll go over and use, it on, use this one. And uh, they shine down the two phase lock microwave beams, lock in on the cow. Poor cow is picked up, brought into the ship, mutilated, and left back down in the field. No tracks, nothing, you know. Uh, they do the same thing with people. And depending, all you have to know is what wavelengths are absorbed in the particular thing you're after. And as long as you can pick a wavelength or a frequency of light that's absorbed within a quarter of that wavelength, you've got a thing you can pick them up with.